So hello there and welcome here again um, in Excel in front of this 16th century Hoxton Chapel. I like to sit here, it's a few miles from my house, it's holiday and the kids are just for a walk now. They were here to play a game, I'm going to join them in a minute. Um, I'm, in this video I'm going to address a question that I get a lot when I'm talking about the what I believe could be the Bach temperament for the world temperate clavier and maybe for all his works. I've made a video there uh, about that in which I was outing myself really so I'm still alive. Actually it's 10 minutes later than recording that video as you can probably see. All jokes apart I get that question a lot. Why on earth is someone writing in 24 keys if all keys sound equal? So that is something I'm going to address in this video. So first We'd like to welcome the new viewers. If you're new here to Authentic Sound, my name is Wim Winters and I play music from Bach to Beethoven and actually from within the strong line of tradition that I really think there is between those two giants. By reconstructing some of the context, I constantly discover new things and even sometimes even new emotions uh, about which I feel privileged to be able to share that with you and hopefully can inspire you as a musician or as a listener. So, yeah, it's a good question. Why is someone composing in 24 keys if all 24 keys sound more or less the same? Because that's what you get when you have a kind of equal temperament. And I really, um, it's not a slip of the tongue. A kind of equal, tem equal temperament is always what you will have. Um, um, good piano tuners of today, uh, they will tune a piano as long as necessary to have it perfectly equal and that means something else than Werkmeister 177. The reason for that is is a kind of philosophical question and I think that just looking at the world temporary the clavier on its own, not realizing perhaps that there were others as well who composed in 24 keys, that it was something that was done amongst the elite musicians. I don't know the situation in France actually, but I don't think that was such a hot thing in France. You should correct me if it was. I'm really not a specialist for that, if I am a specialist for anything. But in Germany uh, you had this fashion and, and, and this, this approach and this also this, this, this new thing about... And Bach was actually not the first one to do that. So if then the 18th century sources are right in saying that, hey, if you want to play in 24 keys, you have to apply equal temperament. Basically, that's what you will read in 99% of the cases. You will find an equal temperament, by the way, which was used from, as I think, in the orchestras. You will not find an, a harpsichord concerto in C-sharp major, why it's not necessary. So, But of course, if you go as far as CPE Bach and you have all thirds equal, gleich rein, then you lose the uh, connection with the characteristics of tonality, which, by the way, as I was saying in that video on temperament, is something that you will not find, as I think, I didn't find it, the connection between the character of the tonality and the thirds. So even Gottlob Turk writes in 1789 in his book very clear about that. He says, yeah, applying equal temperament for 24 keys can raise the question, yeah, but then you lose the characteristics for the tonality of the keys, but that, he says, is not true. Strangely enough, if you play an E-flat minor, you still will feel another mood, another effect, other emotions than uh, when you are playing an E, um, a flat major, or even an other minor key. So, the reason why they played on 24 keys, I think, is very, very simple. It's just as an exercise to be able to play in 24 keys. It's like in the 19th century, uh, for instance, if you go to Franz Liszt, um, he tried to, he started to change the fingerings. Actually, it didn't, it didn't uh, set it true because we're not applying that kind of fingerings. But Franz Liszt was very hard for himself. He said, "I want to be able to use the same fingering as for as I use for C major scales in all the scales." So he started to exercise that. Uh, he, of course, was a technical genius, not saying that he played very fast, but that's between brackets, and certainly for another video. So, But in the 18th century, we look to the 18th century maybe a little bit too much from our time. I'm not saying you all are doing that, but I talk in general. I may be even talking all about what, what was the uh, general approach from the 60s. A little bit 
from our time in the sense that it's long time ago, so they should have been a little bit conservative. And I don't think they were. They were very progressive, and certainly Bach was. Uh, I believe if you were not a progressive one in that time, uh, making progress all the time, so in the definition of making progress all the time, that your career was soon to be ended. It was the nature of humanity until maybe 50 or 60 years ago. Or maybe even uh, you could say that, that people like Mozart started to look back when Mozart wanted to buy a Silberman clavichord uh, that, uh, of Leipzig. I don't recall the name of the owner. So uh, the interests in, in old instruments you could see at the end of the 18th century. But anyway, looking back to the 18th century from now, it has one danger that you are it's kind of believing that they were conservatory, but they were not. So imagine what a giant step this was for keyboard players. To uh, You had this evolution already in the Northern German organ music, and Pachelbel as well. I mean, over the whole place was an evolution in expounding the keys and tonalities. So books to this F-sharp minor prelude and fugue for organ. If you are not familiar with that work, have a look. It's really, really weird to see that music in that period, the Pachelbel has written some things, and even if you're going going before that, so the experimentation with 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 new tonalities, new keys was was there. Then, in the early 18th century, was an expansion of that. The world temperature view, as we think now, is is, the, is 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 the high point. Maybe it was technically certainly, and composition technique certainly it was. But there you had the clavichord that was, in my opinion, the instrument that we were waiting for that they demanded to have developed as a new instrument that they could tune in a temperament that would allow them to uh, to make 24 to play in 24 keys to practice that, to really be able to play in 24 keys. Um, and I think it was a kind of modernity. It had much more to do, if not all to do, with technique, with finger technique, with, 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 uh, with that, more than with expressiveness on tonalities. That's my take from that for now. Um, in this small series of videos that I really lay my soul before you or displace my soul for you. I don't know in English how to uh, express that correctly, but you know what I mean. And it's nothing more than that. Um, and maybe you can correct me if you uh, feel to, but I, I, I think that is the nature of the 24 keys thing. It's a technical thing. There would, and to close this video, there is no reason, not one reason for me to have that C sharp major prelude and C sharp major. It plays much easier in C sh in, in, in C major. So and to character what's the difference between C major, C sharp major and C major? You'll not find the source that's, that tells you it's just the possibility of playing that piece in C sharp major. And you can actually feel for some pieces that the the that they were transposed and the transposition did, didn't do them well um, to keyboard is at least speaking but that's that's certainly for another video so that's my answer to that i hope uh, yeah that it doesn't shock you too much uh, it's only my opinion it's only my belief it's how i think about that so and thanks for watching and again if this is your first time i'd love to have you subscribed um, to the to our channel hit that bell icon so you can get notifications if you would like. Also with the live streams that we are doing a lot now. We have master classes every two Sundays. Most pieces pieces uh, are recorded live with you and their interaction on the live streams is really something I enjoy. So thank you for that and I see you very soon again.